So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to look at this first question and we're going to go over it. And it's kind of like we're going to like figure out what was either wrong with the question or what you may not have known about the question. So here we go. And all our questions start out with a fact, as you can see on the top here. And then they have in the middle a given. It's like a given piece of information to maybe assist you through the question. Then we have the question. And then down below, you're going to see... As you look on the website, because you're going to be on, you're going to be, you're going to be moved to one of our websites behind the scenes, and it's going to talk about the answers. So let's go over this really quick. Take our time just to walk through it. So in the fact, we're talking about many areas throughout the U.S. observe the implementation of model and custom plumbing codes and regulations to protect the health and welfare of the public. Additionally, a number of these jurisdictions appoint inspectors, which are authorities having jurisdictions, or sometimes you'll see that as AHJ, authorities having jurisdictions in some of the code books. And these guys and these women oversee kind of the codes or the rules or regulations of any model and custom code across the country. Specifically tonight, we're talking about the Massachusetts code, but this also, this question also applies to many jurisdictions across the country. So the given part of this is most national model and customized plumbing codes require specific requirements for public restrooms. Now, some of you may be saying, what is a public restroom? Where is a public restroom located? So we're just gonna, we're gonna kind of reduce it down and make it as simple as possible. And we're going to talk about public restrooms as restrooms being the toilet facilities that you'll pass when you're in a mall, walk in the corridors, pass the stores, a general, there'll be this like general bathroom group of ladies and women's rooms. Or if you're in a restaurant and you, the toilet facilities that are in a restaurant where people gather or add any of the large sporting venues as well, those would be truly considered public restrooms. And there are requirements for the hot water at the lavatory faucet, the sink faucet. When you go in there and you have to do your thing and then you get it, you should be washing your hands. And the temperature of the hot water needs to be a particular temperature. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And that's kind of a brief rundown of public restrooms. So the question is, what answer below shall be considered most correct? to complete the following code regulation and policy related statement. In Massachusetts and other jurisdictions, the maximum temperature of the hot water that shall be discharged at the spout of a lavatory faucet used in a public restroom is blank. So that's what we're gonna talk about right now. What's the answer to that blank regarding this question? So we're gonna like lift the screen here on our great board we're going to look at the four answers that we have. So the first answer being A is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I stick my hands under that lavatory faucet, sink faucet in a public restroom, is it 100 degrees? Or is it B, 110 degrees? Or is it C, 120? Or we get to D, 150? Now, right away, one of these questions for me as a plumber and any of you guys out there or girls or gals related to plumbing, or maybe you just want to know this information for your own good. When I, we look at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, well, that's not, that's warm. It's, some people will call that also tepid water, T-E-P-I-D. But that temperature really for anybody who's going to take an exam is on this particular test is a distractor. It's not really the right answer. It doesn't make sense. 100 degrees is not really placed in any of the language of any of the model or custom codes. So when I look at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I know that that is not the correct answer. So one of the answers in multiple choice questions is typically, not all the time, but most of the time, is a distractor. So when I look at 100 degrees, I'm going to go, no, nope, I'm not going to pick that one. Then I go to 110 I'm going to stop there for a second because that could be the answer. And then we get to 120 degrees and I'm just going to explain to you why isn't 120 degrees the answer to this particular question? Because in fact, 120 degrees is the starting number when you define hot water. 
And when you think about a public restroom, you're, you really don't want hot water because when you start getting to 120 degrees, for young children, babies, and the elderly, 120 degrees is almost a temperature where it, it starts to scald people with sensitive skin. So that's why we're not going to pick 120, but 120 would be the answer to a completely different question, particularly the temperature or the definition of hot water. When is water truly hot? By definition, it's 120 and it has a number, a high number two where it caps off, which is 130, which is really hot. So the definition of hot water in a lot of custom codes, model plumbing codes is between 120 and 130, but it's not the answer to this question here we have. And then 150 degrees would be the same. 150 degrees, way too hot, would scald people. You start to get into 150 degrees when you start talking about supplying water that's dedicated to dishwashing equipment in commercial buildings. But in this case, 150 is actually a number that's related to, again, a lot of model and custom codes. It's the maximum temperature allowed in the drainage system before damage is actually done. Yep, you could really dump hot water into a drainage system that's too hot. Expansion contraction of the PVC, cast iron, or the copper material starts to go on, and that's where damage starts to occur as movement in that piping starts to happen. So one of the things is um, that with the 150, think about when you boil spaghetti. And typically, after you boil spaghetti, you're putting it in the calder or whatever that's called, and a lot of that hot water, which was 212 degrees, is now being dumped down a drain right into the drainage system. And a heck of a lot of expansion and contraction starts to go on when that occurs. And potential damage, if you're doing it all the time, every day, that's when, it would, that's when you could potentially get leaks or you start to notice drips under your sink because things are moving around. Pipes are moving, they're growing, they're shrinking with expansion contraction, which brings us now. So we've eliminated A, we've eliminated C, and we've eliminated D just by the process of elimination. And for you apprentice plumbers and you journeyman plumbers who are gonna be taking a master plumbing exam, in any of the tests, you can typically do that if you really know what's going on and you really understand the ins and outs of how codes work and you've read the code books, you can really start to eliminate some of the answers that are listed just by, just by virtue of understanding where the other answers came from. So in this case tonight, we're talking about 110 degrees is in Massachusetts and many other jurisdictions across this great country of ours, is the maximum temperature allowed to be coming out of a faucet in a restaurant, in the restroom facilities at a mall, or in the restroom facilities at a public sporting event venue. So that's all we have for you tonight. We're going to show you a couple more things here really quick as we get ready to go. This is the website, theplumbingacademy.com. Again, like us on Facebook, share us on Facebook, and hopefully you'll visit us every week and we'll talk each week and you guys can write things in and you can like tell us where we're wrong and tell us the things that are great about us. Uh, but try to be kind and be consistent with your questions and answers and we will see you next Thursday for another question off our sample test at theplumbingacademy.com. Thank you.